time to take it off. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie villains unmasked. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the most dramatic and effective shifts in appearance for actors and their respective horror movie villains. We're omitting Linda Blair's demon-possessed Reagan McNeil from The Exorcist, since we also see her real face throughout the film. Number 10. Bill Skarsgård, It What a nice boat. Do you want it back? Just as Tim Curry traumatized a generation of kids in 1990 with his turn as the horrific Pennywise the Dancing Clown, so too did Bill Skarsgård for the 2017 adaptation of Stephen King's classic story. Skarsgård's handsome Scandinavian features are barely recognizable behind the creepy clown makeup and costume, and the actor plays up the character with a malevolence largely missing from the 1990 version. If Curry's Pennywise was more traditional in its good clown gone bad aesthetic, then Skarsgård's takes the separation of actor from role even further by totally losing himself in Pennywise's over-the-top, soul-eating evil. <laughs> and I just started, you know, with the laugh. in the car. Driving through Hollywood in clown face, <laughs> laughing like a maniac. <laughs> Number 9. Devay Chase, The Ring One could argue that this American adaptation of a fan-favorite Japanese horror film hasn't aged particularly well. Still, young Devay Chase's portrayal of the vengeful ghost Samara remains one of the most iconic horror images of the early 2000s. The scene where Samara emerges from the TV screen and her cursed videotape was parodied to death at the time, yet Chase sells it with remarkable poise and genuine chills. Dripping wet with a menacing crawl and effective makeup, it is a complete 180 visual when compared to DeVay's everyday look, which thankfully does not involve murdering people with a VHS chain letter. Come on, let me see what you got. What you got? That's all. <laughs> Number eight. Tom Fitzpatrick, The Insidious Franchise The Insidious franchise is known for its eye-catching visuals and memorable musical score, both of which go hand-in-hand -hand with two of the series' lead villains. For starters, Insidious composer Joseph Bashara is the man responsible for playing the series' iconic lipstick face demon, while Tom Fitzpatrick took over the role of Parker Crane, also known as The Bride in Black for the franchise's second and third installments. Fitzpatrick is barely recognizable underneath an elaborately laced gown and veil, while his face is similarly decked out in an impressive, creepy makeup job that still gives us the chills. Number 7. Doug Bradley, The Hellraiser Franchise Nobody escapes us. Speaking of horror franchises, The Hellraiser series is one that's continued, for better or worse, right on to the modern day. It's the franchise's lead Cenobite, Pinhead, played by Doug Bradley, that serves as its most recognizable character. The esteemed British thespian portrayed the stately S&M demon for a total of eight films before departing in 2011. Bradley always seemed to approach Pinhead with a seriousness and respect that elevated the character above other, more basic or animalistic villains. There's an intelligence there matched only by Pinhead's penchant for pain and bloodletting, which, while Bradley's striking face and booming authoritative voice, make him the one and only Pinhead for his legions of fans. We'll tear your soul apart. Number 6. Robert Englund, The A Nightmare on Elm Street Franchise Come to Freddy. Doug Bradley isn't the only horror actor closely associated with his role. For fans of the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, there's only one man who can portray the dream demon child murderer Freddy Krueger, Robert Englund. The native Californian actually boasts a large and varied resume to his credit, working in everything from comedy and drama to underground hits like Eaten Alive and Galaxy of Terror. Still, it's those horrible burn scars, striped sweater, and iconic razor-fingered glove that have endeared Englund to the nightmare faithful. Often overlooked is his compelling body language, which draws on influences from classic westerns to portray Freddy almost like some sort of supernatural gunslinger. Please, God. This is God. Number 5. Nick Castle and Tony Moran, The Halloween Franchise <laughs> To be honest, there isn't just one actor who can be considered the one and only Michael Myers. John Carpenter's iconic boogeyman has been portrayed by a number of people over the years, with no less than five taking up the mantle in the first film alone. 
However, it's Nick Castle and Tony Moran who might be the most closely associated with the role, despite the latter's claim to fame only being the unmasking scene at the film's climax. Castle plays Myers throughout most of Halloween's runtime, shifting to production designer Tommy Lee Wallace, stuntman James Winburn, and producer Deborah Hill for other shots. Nick would eventually return to the Myers mask in 2018, adopting the role for a brief cameo. Number 4. Gunnar Hansen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Leatherface is another horror icon who's been portrayed by a number of actors over the years. But this time, there's only one name we really need to discuss, Gunnar Hansen. This isn't taking anything away from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's solid first two sequels, but it's Hansen's body language that brings Leatherface to life in Toby Hooper's initial masterpiece. Hansen reportedly studied children at a hospital for the developmentally disabled in order to research the role of an abused, chainsaw, and hammer-wielding psychopath. Hansen may have come across as menacing on screen, but the feedback from those who knew and worked with him is that Gunner was one of the nicest, most genuine guys around. Number 3. Bonnie Aarons, The Nun Today's horror movie trailers generally aren't cut from the same sort of restrained cloth as they were in the 70s and 80s. That said, it can be difficult for a trailer to generate the sort of buzz earned by The Nun in 2018, which was thanks largely to the work of Bonnie Ahrens as the titular character. This offshoot from The Conjuring Universe featured Ahrens in some striking and memorable makeup, while her performance in the role felt believable enough to earn praise even from diehard fans of the franchise. And this wasn't the first time Aaron's had given her all for a role, as she delivered a similarly menacing performance in the non-horror film Mulholland Drive as a frightening back-alley bum. Number 2. Balaji Badejo, Alien Dallas? Many actors on this list are closely associated with the franchise and its cinematic legacy. That was not the case with Nigerian performer Balaji Badejo, who only had one screen credit to his name, that of the titular xenomorph in Ridley Scott's Alien. Badejo was discovered in London by Scott's crew while studying there for a degree in graphic design, and was immediately cast in the role due to his towering 6-foot 10-inch frame. Badejo's height was imperative for capturing the xenomorph's menacing gait and stance, yet the actor never again returned to the role. Instead, Badejo lived out his life back home running an art gallery, until he sadly succumbed to sickle cell anemia in 1992. Before we unmask our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The makeup has gotten a lot better. Like, I just did the third film this last year, and it was only about three hours, so it was, it was a cakewalk. Hey, Kate, that way! Run like a stroke out of um, and then when they put the makeup on, I couldn't really hear, speak, or see. Anyway, um, I could see a tiny little bit, and I was just watching it there. What happened to me was so horrible that it wouldn't even be allowed in a movie. I talked to this reporter, and she said, let's do a story about the local kid that's making his way in the stunt business. I know, but I'm sorry, you can't go outside. You know, you, you just... Uh, Trent! Hey, no, Trent, stop it! I was uh, running every day. I did all the stunt in the movie, so I was learning with the stunt guy, with the stunt crew all the day. One, Doug Jones, Pan's Labyrinth. Boss. Directors often have a troupe of actors around them with whom they collaborate on many projects. Doug Jones certainly seems to fit into that category when it comes to the filmography of Guillermo del Toro, serving as something of a good luck charm for the acclaimed director. Jones has provided his talent for physical acting and transformations in films such as Hellboy and The Shape of Water, but it was his performances as both the fawn and pale man in Pan's Labyrinth that earned him the most critical acclaim. 
It's frankly incredible how much Jones brings to these characters with his body language and graceful movements, saying as much with a single hand gesture as other actors could deliver in an entire monologue. Este es el libro de las encrucijadas. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.